This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now turning to the chapter on interest. Uh, the sort of thing we're looking at is maybe I put some money in the bank. The bank's paying me interest. I earn interest on the money. Uh, and so, to start explaining the ways you can expect to deal with it, look at example one. A man invests $200 on the 1st of January each year. And on the 31st of December each year, simple interest is credited at 15%. So we're getting 15% interest each year. And this interest may seem a bit strange here, but it's put in a separate account with, and the, the interest doesn't earn any interest. Let me show you what I mean. On the 1st of January, it says how much will be in 31st of December following our fourth payment. So on the 1st of January, we make our first payment. And we put 200 in the bank. At the end of the year, 31st December, we get interest. And the interest is 15%. There's 200 in the bank, so 15% of 200. We'll get interest of 30. And we're putting that into a separate account. So we've 200 in our main account and we've 30 in this other account where we're getting the interest. Uh, the second year, 1st of January, put in another 200, so we've now 400 in the bank. And at the end of the year, we get interest. But this time, it'll be 15% of the 400, which is a total of 60. Um, the third year, the 1st of January, another 200, so the 600 there. And the bank gives us interest, 15%, this time of 600, 90. Uh, the fourth year, the 1st of January, another 200 goes in, so we've now 800. And at the end of the year, they give us 15% interest on it. 15% interest on 800 is 120. And so how much do I have in total at the end of that fourth year? I have 800 in my main account. This other account where I've been getting the interest, 30, 90, 180, 300. So no problem there, except of course, I was a bit silly to put that interest into a separate account. You know, maybe I just took the money, in which case I've taken 300. But if I wasn't actually going to take the interest, it would have been better if I'd let the interest add on to the amount in the account so it could have got interest as well. You know, at the end of that first year, I got 30 interest. If I'd left it there, there'd have been 230. I'd have got more interest in the following year and so on. And so, usually, well, always, in fact, unless we're told different, we assume that the interest gets interest, as I'll show you in a minute. Here, it's what we call simple interest, because it's easy. We're not getting interest on the interest. The bank pays us interest, we either take the money, <laughs> you know, so we've still only 200 left in the account, or oh, we keep it separate and it doesn't earn any interest. That's simple interest. However, that is rare, far, far more important for the exam, is what we call compound interest, where we get interest each year, but the interest means we've more money in the bank, which will get us still more interest. 
Look at example two, if you would. Uh, a man invests $500 now for three years with interest at 10% PA. PA is per animal per year. How much will be in his account after three years? All right, he invests 500 now. So now he puts 500 in the bank. And that initial amount is called the principal. The initial amount. Now the bank's paying interest at 10% a year, so at the end of the year we'll get interest at 10% of 500, so we'll get 50. But instead of taking the money or putting it in a separate account, we let the bank add the interest to the amount already there. And so at the end of one year, there's now 550 in the bank. We're going to leave it there for another year. And so at the end of the second year, there'll be interest again. But this time it's 10% of 550. 55. The interest itself has earned interest. You know, it's 10% of the original 500 is another 50. But because we've put another 50, left another 50 there, interest on it is an extra 5. So at the end of the second year, we now have 605. And we, again, the interest has been added on. Uh, we're leaving it for another year. So the interest in the third year will be 10% of 605, which is 60.5. And at the end of three years, it's grown to 665.50. And there we are, yes. We invest uh, three years at 10%. How much would it have grown to? Six sixty five fifty after three years. And although we don't very often use the word, that is actually called the terminal value. It's the amount at the end of the period here at three years. Now I hope what we did there makes sense. I hope that's fine. And that didn't take long when it's only three years. But if it was five years, if it was ten years. It's not going to be harder, but it obviously takes quite a while. Uh, keep adding on 10% and going on for 10 years. Uh, and so you can, there is a formula. Now the formula looks worse than it is. Uh, I hate just learning a formula because if you see the logic, it's easy. A, the amount at the end of the nth year is given by P, the principal times 1 plus r, the rate of interest to the power n. All it is, is this. When I went from 500 to 550, I was taking the 500 and I was adding on 10% or 0.1 of 500. If I multiply by 1.1, I get 550. 500 times 1 to 500, but another 0.1 for the 10%, 0.1 interest. And similarly, the next year, we started with 550. To add on 10% of 0.1 of 550, if I multiply by 1.1, 550 times 1.1, is 6.05. Then to add on 10% interest each year, we multiply by 1.1 each year. And so what we could have done, which is, I think, a bit quicker, is to say, OK, the principal, the original amount, is 500. Every year, I'll multiply by 1.1. 
0.1 to add on 10%, 10.1. And at every year, how many years are we doing it for here? Three. So multiplying by 1.1 three times is 1.1 cubed. And I think that's a bit quicker on my calculator. 500 times 1.1 three times is 66550. It still takes time on your calculator, obviously, but I think it's quicker than writing down each of the three years. So 500 is the principal, the original amount. Three is the number of years in the formula n. And point one is r, is the rate of interest. So to show you what I mean, look at example three. And let's do it that way. A man invests 800 at 6% a year for five years. How much will he have at the end of five years? Well, by all means, if you want to do what I did before, you'll get the right answer, but it takes time. Much quicker is to say, all right, the principal 800. Every year to add on 6% and multiply by 1 plus the interest, 1.06. 6% is 0 0.06. I'll multiply by 1.06 for each year. In total, there are five years. And what does that come to? 800 times 1.06, five times. It comes to 1070.58. Uh, usually we do things to the nearest dollar, but the exam will make it clear. And be official with your calculator. You know, you shouldn't need to keep multiplying. You should be able to have a button to do the power five. But there we are. That's compounding. It's adding on interest. The original, the principal, the initial amount was 800. The 1070 is the terminal value, the value at the end of the period after adding on interest, and the interest is getting interest, it's compound interest. Uh, over the page, the same sort of thing, it's mentioned effective rate, but interest isn't always mentioned as being per year. Look at example four. A credit card company charges a nominal rate, an interest rate, of 2% per month. Now, of course, people want to know what that is per year. And what's very tempting is to say, well, if it's 2% a month, there are 12 months in a year, 12 times 2% is 24% per year. And certainly in the UK, credit card companies do charge interest something like 2% a month. And they used to say, oh, that's 24% a year. But it was being a bit of a cheat because of this compounding business. Because if you don't pay, they charge 2%. So you owe more, and the next month is 2% of the total. It compounds. That's known as the nominal rate. But credit card companies are now told they have to, by law in the UK certainly, say what the real rate per year is with this compounding. And it's the same idea. You see, suppose you borrowed a hundred. Every month they add on two percent interest. They multiply by 1.02 each month. And just like I had in the earlier examples with this compounding, if there's 12 months they'll do it 12 times to the power 12. 
And so, what would that come to at the end of the year? 1.02 to the power 12, and here it is useful to be able to use the correct button on your calculator. 1.02 to the power 12 is what times 1.12682. And so over the year, effectively, is what the in, uh, how much is the interest? But look at this, you see, if you uh, borrowed or put on deposit 100, and if at the, after a year the amount's grown to 100 times that, it means that the interest is 0.2682 or 26.82% per year. And that's really the yearly interest rate. They tried to make it look cheap by saying 12 times 2 is 24, but it's actually more than that. The effective interest rate is 26.82% per year. And as you can see, it's also called the annual percentage rate. OK, well, there is dealing with pure interest. However, although you can be asked questions similar to the ones we've just been through, much more important for the exam is, as you'll see, effectively doing it backwards, which sounds a bit odd, something called discounting. So I'll pause this lecture here, but the next lecture I'll explain what we mean by discounting and how we deal with this same principle, same logic.